justice will be brought before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome again to the inevitable journey and the first phase of the journey which is death. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the arrival of death to the human person, to the person, brings him a lot of truth that he may not be believing in beforehand or may have been heedless of it. Right before the break, we talked about when the person is being carried to the graveyard, his soul will yell and say, let's go if he was righteous. And if it was not righteous and pious, his soul will say, where are you taking me? وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ The agonies of death will bring you another truth, that right after they bury you, Right after they dig a hole in the ground, you may own houses and homes in, in this world, but they will only give you, at the time of your death, enough to accommodate your body. And after they place sand on you, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in Hadith al-Bara ibn Azib, radhi Allahu an, the Hadith fi Mustadrak al-Hakim, and you will find me always referring to this Hadith, a beautiful one, that the deceased will actually feel the people departing and he will hear their footsteps as they leave. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters in Islam, the last connection between you and this world will be shoes, hearing sounds of shoes. And then two angels will come and wake that person up and they will ask him the three questions. Who is your Lord? Man Rabbuk? What is your deen? What is your religion? And what do you say about the man who sent to you, who was sent to you? The agonies of death will bring you the truth that you will be one of the two. One who was, who will be granted steadfastness, that he will be able to answer these questions because of the leave and the permission and the support and the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the scene is so terrifying, intimidating for everyone. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa described these angels that their mission is to make the person fear and make him anxious. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting you steadfastness will qualify you to answer the questions. يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ الظَّالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant steadfastness to those who believed and as for the dhalimeen, the wrongdoers, they will be misguided. And by the way, that is where after we deliver the deceased to the ground, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to make that beautiful dua for him, Allahumma thabbithu inda su'al. Oh Allah grant him steadfastness because he, once he is asked by those two angels about Allah, about the deen and about the messenger. Brothers and sisters in Islam, based on the result of that fitna, of that questioning, there is another truth that death will bring to you, which is your graveyard is going to be a garden from paradise or a bit from the bits of the hellfire. Which one? There is another truth that death will bring to you, brothers and sisters in Islam which is you will be under the ground for years, maybe thousands of years. Allah knows best, maybe a day or two until resurrection is here. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ Yes, death has agonies and if there is someone who would have been spared from these agonies would have been Muhammad 
صلى الله عليه وسلم في صحيح البخاري حديث عائشة رضي الله عنها she describes for us the scene when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was departing this world he was laying down and he had a pan of water a can of water next to him and he would place a piece of cloth in that water and he would wipe his sweat and he would say لا إله إلا الله ألا إن للموت سكرات لا إله إلا الله indeed death has agonies yes death will bring you a lot of agonies brothers and sisters in Islam when Fatima رضي الله عنها and the hadith في صحيح البخاري hadith Anas ibn Malik رضي الله عنه she came and she saw her father in that condition she said Wakarba, how hard it is my father on you what you're going through Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her la karba ala abiki ba'd al yawm there is no more distress there is no more hardship on your father after this brothers and sisters in Islam When Aisha radiallahu anha entered into the place when her father Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anha was dying and the hadith fi Sahih ibn Hibban and she saw her father enduring the agonies of death but she did not have that reaction that she had towards the agonies of the, the, towards her father like she did with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know why because she said after seeing the amount of distress and the amount of hardship that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam endured as he was passing away from this world anyone else for me was easier than this was easier than this she said Mata Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam abayna haqinati wa daqinati the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died on my chest and after seeing the amount of pain that he was going through anyone else I would look at as he was departing this world I would see this is nothing compared to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through brothers and sisters in Islam her father also was fainting and then she started saying a line of poetry she said, لعمرك لا يغني الثراء عن الفتى إذا حشرجت يوما وضاق بها الصدر لعمرك by your life your riches will not suffice you today when the soul reaches the chest and about to leave the body there is no help that you can receive from anywhere Abu Bakr al-Siddiq رضي الله عنه regained his consciousness and he said, Ya Bunayati, my daughter, do not say that. Rather say, Wajaat Sakratul Mauti Bil Haq, Dalikama Kunta Min Hutahid. The agonies of death brought you the truth. This is what you have been avoiding all your lives. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Aisha radiallahu anha also tells us and the hadith in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was healthy he used to tell us this when a Prophet is about to die he will be shown his place in Jannah and then he will be given the option to die or not and when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was passing away and he was going through the agonies of death the stoppers of death I saw him raising his thumb up and he said Allahumma li warhamni 
O oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me. And then he said, وَأَلْحِقْنِي بِالرَّفِيقِ الْأَعْلَى And make me join the highest companion, the best company, the company of the prophets, the martyrs, the righteous, and the truthful. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا ذَٰلِكَ الْفَضْلُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ عَلِيمًا And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, we will be with the company of the Prophet, the company, the company of the Prophets, and the righteous, the truthful, and the martyrs. And what a company this is. Aisha radiallahu anha said, I knew that he was given the option to stay with us or to leave. And I knew that he did not choose us. He chose in the high company, Ar-Rafiq al-A'la. The hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa fall down. And with this, he departed. He, lied. he, he, he died. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. You and me will die. Please, don't miss the next episode of the inevitable journey. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to